My new wife is not here. Right after the divorce with my cheating husband was finalized, he called me immediately, and suddenly started pouring his heart out like that. I reply, biting back a laugh. So you finally noticed, huh? My name is Betty. I'm a 34-year-old part-time housewife. My family consists of my husband Nathan and our daughter Lori, who recently entered elementary school. We are just an ordinary family like anyone else. However, recently something unusual has been happening. I've been married to Nathan for nine years. I guess you could say it's that fate, but things are getting cold between us as a couple. While there are many couples. Who remain affectionate no matter how many years they have been married. Unfortunately, we are different. There are days when we don't exchange a word at all, and even when we do, it's minimal. Despite not having an overtime heavy job, my husband comes home late every night. In some cases, he might not come home at all. Even a simple good morning or good night. Is met with a mere "oh" if I'm lucky. If he is in a slightly bad mood, being ignored is a common occurrence. As my husband gradually changed, I felt lonely and sadness, but only in the beginning. Now I've gotten used to it. In that sense, my feelings towards my husband have completely cooled off. I suppose. Well, even if we continue as a pretend couple. It's okay since he covers our living expenses. He's a kind father to our daughter, after all. Even that thought has become a thing of the past. There's no living expenses again. Nathan, that guy, hasn't deposited this month's living expenses again. Yes, recently, my husband stopped depositing the living expenses. What's going on? I confronted him. I forgot. A nonchalant response came back, and the next day, it was transferred to the household account. I wish he would just hand it over in person. While thinking this, I sent a message to my husband on my phone, but it remains unread. He won't deposit it unless I ask, meaning the money won't come in unless it's marked as read. Until then. I have to make ends meet on my part-time income. My income is not that much. Hurry up and realize it. Deposit the money. Until it's deposited, my stomach aches every day. Despite reducing our living expenses to begin with, how negligent can he be to forget even depositing that money? Anger intensifies along with the stomach pain. He has been cutting our living expenses. Citing tough economic times, even though our daughter has just entered elementary school, requiring more money, he said that the situation in the world has eased up a lot, and it's costing a lot of money to socialize. Is socializing more important than our daughter? Isn't that too much? Even if we continue as a pretend couple, I want him to value our daughter. My wish, however, was in vain. As the message I sent remained unread, several days later, finally, my husband came home. Setting a record for the longest time away, he returned after a week. The living expenses hasn't been deposited. Why won't you read my messages? Oh, I forgot. Make sure to deposit it by tomorrow. If I remember, remember. Don't forget. I hold back from saying anything that might trigger a fierce argument, because it's predictable. Just then, our daughter enters the living room from her room. Upon seeing her father, Lori's face lights up. "Welcome home, Dad!" She rushes to embrace him, but shockingly, he avoids it and dismisses her with a firm motion of his hand. "Hey, you, Lori." Dad is tired. Maybe later. Before I could voice my protest, he said that and locked himself in his room. He never came out of his room. 
This is the same as not being at home. I wanted to talk to dad about very things. What mother wouldn't stand up to see her daughter depressed like that? I stood in front of the room where my husband was and raised my hand to knock. But, yeah, yeah, next time. I'd like to take a trip to Florida or something. His voice from behind the door halted my hand in its tracks. A trip? My husband? What does he mean by next time? When did he go on a trip? Despite me asking, he continues talking without realizing I'm listening. I get lonely too. I don't want to be with that annoying wife even for a second. But sometimes, I have to come back. If I don't return occasionally, it's not good. It's okay. The only one I love is you, Isabel. Love? Who? Isabel? Does that mean my husband is having an affair? Is that what he's saying? A sensation of the ground crumbling beneath me overwhelms me. I came back because I thought I should, but I will be going back there from tomorrow. Daughter? Oh, I don't care about her. She's just a child between me and that wife. Ah, I want to have a child with you, Isabel, soon. I finally truly collapse right there on the spot. What on earth is happening? Isn't my husband completely in the wrong? If it was just a fling, it would have been somewhat acceptable. But judging from how he speaks, it seems serious. And to top it off, he doesn't care about our daughter? He wants a child with his mistress? The cruelty of it all brings tears to my eyes. Mom, what's wrong? Returning to the living room, my daughter, who was watching TV, rushes over in concern. Is your stomach hurting? Are you okay? My kind daughter, who worries about me. Isn't it too much to not want such a good child? The moment I thought that, my tears stopped instantly. I need to become strong for my daughter. At this point, Let's just treat my husband as a wallet and live on. With this determination, I decided to talk to my husband in the late night hours when our daughter is asleep. However, we need to talk. It was my husband who started saying that. Just as I nodded, thinking this might be a good opportunity. I'm divorcing you. Huh? A sudden declaration of divorce. And an odd sound escapes my mouth involuntarily. What? Divorce? What about Lori? I don't need a daughter who is as useless as you. You raise her. I won't pay child support. What are you saying? You won't pay child support even if we divorce? I'm sure child support would be a must in any divorce. I'm not interested in this house anymore. I won't waste money on useless people. Wasting money? I can't let that slide. Against my instinct, I retort, and my husband just smirks. You know, being with you guys isn't fun anymore. I can't stand being a family with you. It's annoying. What? It felt like the world in front of me turned pitch black. I'm not going to blame him for losing affection for me. Because I can't speak for anyone else, but it's different for our daughter. Isn't your own flesh and blood precious? Is money for our daughter a waste? What a terrible person! A terrible one is you. Being able to marry to a great guy like me for nine years is something you should be grateful for. What? I feel a vein throbbing in my temple. No, it's actually throbbing. Anger overwhelms me inside. Hurry up and prepare the divorce agreement. Saying that, my husband locked himself in his room again. Prepare it yourself? If someone wants a divorce, they should do it themselves. No, it's fine for now. The next morning, when I woke up, my husband was already gone. The room felt like an empty shell. 
I noticed some of my husband's personal belongings are missing. Apparently, he left. Several days later, he's not putting in the living expenses. Days have passed since my husband left, but the living expenses haven't been deposited yet. My hands trembled. Even though I send messages, he doesn't read them. No answer when I call. If it's come to this, I have to resort to my last option. I called my husband's company. As I expected, he was at the company. What's up? Don't bother me at work with phone calls. If you don't put in the living expenses, I will keep calling the company. Apparently, this had an effect, and the money was deposited soon after. But right after that, I'm divorcing you, so this is the last time. I won't give you any more money. And with that phone call, he disappeared. Without any explanation, my husband went silent. Even when I called the company, they wouldn't connect me, and I was at the loss. What should I do? Regrettably, I couldn't come up with a good solution. Without love, divorce is inevitable. But I need to secure the living expenses for parenting. Do I have no choice but to proceed with the divorce settlement? However, I know a bit about my husband. Even if we create a legal document and decide on child support, he won't pay. That's the kind of person he is. Even if we try to garnish his wages, he might disappear and become untraceable. That man might do something like that. What should I do? I murmured once again, and in that instance, my daughter's smile flashed in my mind. A tear rolled down my cheek. I have to become stronger. There is no time to cry. For my daughter, who doesn't have time to cry, I must be strong. As I roughly wiped away the tears, a call came in. It wasn't from my husband. A few days later, my husband came to the house. Well, came is a strange way to put it, but house is under my husband's name. He came because I called him. So, in front of me, my husband sat back in a chair. There was no trace of the gentle smile he had when we got married. Internally sighting, I handed him a piece of paper. It was a divorce agreement. Have you made up your mind? Yes, I agree to the divorce. I can't be with someone who doesn't cherish our daughter anymore. It's over. I've had enough. As I bit my lip tightly, my husband reached out with a smile. He took the divorce agreement and held it up as if presenting it to the heavens. All right, my future is bright with this. Thanks. What are you going to do now? Well, who knows? I haven't figured it out yet. But I might find a new woman who will create a happy family, different from you guys. I felt irritated at his sarcastic remarks. He probably already has a woman in mind for remarriage. Does he really want to avoid paying alimony that badly? In child support? To confirm, I asked my husband, who responded with a smirk. Yeah, you're gonna hire a lawyer or something to formally dodge it, right? Well, I will still try and dodge it. I can garnish your wages. Then I will change jobs until you can't. Maybe I will even move far away. There are countless ways to avoid payments. As expected, I clenched my fist tightly. This man is just as terrible as I expected. No. Even worse, I stood up, pointed at the entrance, and said, Understood. I don't need anything more from a piece of trust like you. Please take your leave. Oh, okay. Jeez, you're so cold. That's why I got sick of you. Please go. You are a stranger now. Technically, we are still married. But my feelings towards him are like those towards a stranger. I don't want anything to do with this guy ever again. 
With that determination, I glared at the door. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, scary. It was right to divorce you. As he said that, I saw my husband living in the corner of my eye. After the door closed, various emotions overwhelmed me, and I cried. Perhaps because I cried loudly, my daughter, who had woken up, heard it, was surprised, and started crying along with me. My daughter and I cried together in the middle of the night. Thus, a new chapter began for us. A mother and daughter might as well start fresh and move to a new house. Ideally, we should divide the shared property between a married couple. But there isn't much. I should investigate how much my husband is hiding, but I don't have the energy for it anymore. Fortunately, I still have the savings from my single life and the money my parents gave me when I got married, so our living expenses should be fine for now. Moreover, when I consulted with my boss at work earlier, they considered offering me a regular position. In that case, I need to leave that unpleasant house with memories of my husband. As I was browsing for properties on the computer, wondering where to go on this day off with no work, my phone rang, and surprisingly, it was from my ex husband. I answered the phone, wondering what the hell is going on, and the air is filled with some kind of crying and sputtering. Oh, Betty, li listen to me. I don't want to listen, but what is it? I went to her place, but she's not there. What do you mean? I told you, the woman who is going to be my new wife, she's not there. Huh? Weren't you talking about finding a new woman? God, no, no! I mean, I found someone right away. My approach was brilliantly successful, and things progressed smoothly. More like a full on sprint than smooth progress, right? I went to her room to marry her, and the room that was supposed to be there, the room she lived in, was not there. Did the apartment get demolished? No, no! The building is still there, and the room is there too. I asked the building manager, and they said she moved out. Hmm. What should I do? I don't know. It's not my concern. We are strangers now. I said that, and hung up the phone with a snap. Then he called back again right away. Shut up already! Don't be so evil! We are a couple! Our marital relationship was terminated when you submitted the agreement. Oh, right. Well, never mind about that. Anyway, I don't have a girlfriend, and my condo has been cancelled, so I can't get it. I see. So, I have a favor to ask. He sniffed abruptly, from a casual tone to a serious one, though it doesn't seem to matter much. Can you let me stay tonight? No, just until I can get in touch with my girlfriend and find a new place. Impossible. I told him that and hung up. And he called me back in a second. You are so annoying. Don't hang up. I'm hanging up. If I hang up, he would just call again. Feeling annoyed, I decided to meet somewhere and talk. After ending the call with my husband and setting a meeting place, I made another call to someone else. An hour later, I ordered coffee at a certain cafe, and my ex-husband showed up. Hey, did you wait? You still have my room. I will live there for a while. It took him just a second to say that after taking a seat. I think you should look next to me before making such a statement. I gave him a disdainful look, and finally, he shifted his gaze to my side, and there, his gaze stopped. I Isabel, why are you here? Finally noticed, my ex-husband froze as I burst into laughter. Yes, I hadn't come along to the cafe. The person I called after the conversation with my ex-husband was Isabel, his affair partner. Hello, I'm Isabel, Nathan's affair partner. 
still in her early twenties. She radiated a dazzling youthfulness, and she waved at my ex-husband with a smiling face. Oh, what? Why? In front of my bewildered ex-husband, Isabel smiled sweetly. We'll be in contact secretly without your knowledge. What? What does that mean? My ex-husband's scream echoed through the cafe. Actually, Isabel contacted me. She expressed a desire to talk and apologized to me, your wife. So, after my ex-husband brought up the idea of divorce, and I decided to become stronger for the sake of our daughter, but before handing him the divorce agreement, Isabel contacted me. She took the liberty of looking at my ex-husband's cell phone to get my contact information. I was perplexed, but I wanted to talk to her too, so I agreed. I had the calculation that if things went well, I might obtain evidence of the affair. It seems my husband is determined to deny everything, but even with a wistful makeup, she was pretty and young and very serious, despite her soft appearance. Well, maybe she's not serious when she's messing around with other people's husbands. I will leave that aside at this point. I'm sorry. As soon as we met, she bowed her head and apologized to me. I'm aware that getting involved with someone else's husband is a despicable act. No matter how much I'm scolded and criticized, it doesn't matter. I just couldn't stop my feelings. She continued to bow her head earnestly. But his wife has done terrible things to him. I couldn't just stand by after seeing Nathan tearfully talking about how even his daughter is cold to him. I'm truly sorry. Upon hearing this, a question mark popped into my head. Cold? Me and my daughter? What the hell are you talking about? Huh? Isabel looks up at me in surprise. Then we began to reconcile our stories, and then it became clear: Nathan is an outrageous liar. I heard that his wife is constantly cheating and doesn't do any housework. No, I have no recollection of that at all. Daughter is aggressive, violent, and abusive at home. She's into flashy makeup, smoking, and drinking. My daughter is in first grade, though. Then I showed her the picture of my daughter on my phone, the two shots of her with me, etc. Eh? In a barely audible voice, Isabel expressed her surprise. He is still as thoughtless as ever, even though he will be exposed in the future. Unforgivable. At that moment, our voices harmonized. When I had finished telling my husband everything, I offered my husband an envelope. These are the proofs of your affair that Isabel provided, along with documents for child support and alimony. I've consulted with a lawyer and prepared them thoroughly. Eh? If he resists, I will involve a lawyer in our discussions. A lawyer? Isabel knows a good lawyer who kindly agreed to help us. I've also contacted your parents, so there's no escaping. If you don't pay, we will contact you through the lawyer. W wait, dodging responsibility and running away won't be tolerated. Saying that, I stood up. If proper payments aren't made, I will contact you through the lawyer. I wasn't the only one who stood up. Isabel did too. Our marriage never happened. I can't marry someone. Who deceives with even the age of his child? So, so that's how it is. Leaving my former husband in a state of shock and bewilderment, Isabel and I left the cafe. As we walked from the cafe to the station, we started to part ways. I'm truly sorry. Isabel bowed her head once again. I will transfer the money for my part shortly. Understood. Though we cooperated in exposing the lying man, we never became friends. It's natural. Regardless of the reasons, she had destroyed our family. I discounted her settlement payment significantly, 
because it is true that she helped me in many ways. Still, it's a clean slate. I'm truly sorry. Saying that, Isabel bowed her head once again and left. I'm sure we won't meet again. Afterward, my ex husband, abandoned by Isabel, unbelievably came crying to me. But of course, I turned him away. I contacted his parents, and they took him back. But even so, my ex husband was out of control, and a neighbor who heard the commotion called the police, who took him in. His position at work worsened due to the issues, leading to stress induced mistakes and eventually dismissal. Without finding a new job, his parents abandoned him when he refused to leave his room, and he was even kicked out of his family home. The subsequent whereabouts of both Isabel and my ex husband remain unknown. As I heard vague stories, but never learned the truth, I couldn't help. But think that when you do something wrong, divine retribution may follow. My daughter and I found a new home within the same school community, coinciding with my promotion to a regular employee at the company. It was fortunate since someone was retiring at the perfect time. I guess when a door closes, a window opens. Work is hard, but steady and rewarding. My daughter is helping me more and more with the house. I'm very happy now to see my smiling daughter growing up every day.